Good morning, traders, and welcome to the live trading webinar with JTrader. So we'll do some live trading today. It's uh, uh, JTrader is a stock trader. We do it every Wednesday. Uh, he comes in a little later, around uh, you know 10, 15, 10, 20 uh, East Coast time. Uh, and uh, uh, the whole goal here is to uh, complete your education here in Bookmap. Uh, you have the educational course online. You have the live forward-looking analysis that we have Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. We go for an hour and a half. Uh, and then we have um, uh, Jay Trader uh, today and Scott Polsini tomorrow, a futures trader. Uh, they will take some live positions. It is in demo paper trading mode. Uh, but uh, you guys can learn uh, a tremendous amount of how uh, other traders look at the markets and trade them. Uh, and manage them. Uh, so you guys know who J Trader is. Uh, you have his contact information. I'll put it into the chat for you guys. Uh, I need to go through the disclosures, and then uh, we're going to take a little bit of time and go through some S and P or whatever your requests are uh, before we jump into uh, and, and J Trader gets into the room here. General disclosure: All Bookmap Limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only, and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation demo paper trading mode and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so you know that it's uh, in demo. It's not a trade copier service. Uh, and it's not for you to take trades based off of uh, 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 it, what another uh, person's actions may be. It is for educational purposes only. All right, so let's, uh, we're gonna jump in here and take a look at the uh, live market uh, in the S&P E-mini. Uh, and see what's going on. Um, I lost my connection to uh, Rhythmic, so we'll be looking at DX feed here uh, with the ES, so I don't have my, uh, they don't offer MBO data, so I do not have it here, uh, but we can look at some sweeps and uh, absorption instead, uh, and uh, some other things as well. First, bigger picture. I even lost my Rhythmic chart, so I can't even go over that. Um, uh, that's okay. Uh, what uh, we're, we're going to do here is review yesterday's recording uh, just a little bit. Uh, and uh, let me show you where that is. It's on our YouTube channel uh, book map here. Uh, and you scroll down and you'll see live streaming recordings here. And this is the latest one here on the left. Okay, we'll, we'll open that up. I opened it up already into a different um, uh, tab here. And what I want to cover is... The lines that we drew up here, all right, higher time frame. So this was during the webinar uh, yesterday. Uh, this was around um, an hour and 13 minutes into it. Uh, and we were looking for retesting some of these zones in here. So, you know, we're not making this stuff up. This was done beforehand, right? Uh, and uh, let's take a look at some of these areas here because... Uh, this is where we're looking for significant kind of order flow around some of these levels on the higher time frame. It is important to map out your higher time frame levels. Then you want to look at the order flow around those areas here. So if I can read it correctly, it looks like, uh, um, boy, I can't even read it. Um, it is 40, oh God, I don't know. Uh, it, I can't recall, um, but uh, you can see the lines up here. It looks like we just came up to this area here uh, just recently. Okay, so let's let's take a look, uh, and maybe this will, and this is bullish, become a little bit more clear here. 45.26, and then maybe 45.56 or something like that. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, maybe maybe you guys remember Kurt or uh, Alan. Uh, maybe you guys recall. Uh, what it might might have been. Uh, this is why I want to go through it is because I want to go through the order flow now uh, and uh, what does it look like uh, at these levels here. So um, uh, 
what has been um so uh, yeah any anyway let's, let's just take a look at this s p here because it's up in those levels and and it's just really important like guys like mark up your levels uh and and have reasons why you're marking up your levels uh those higher time frame levels are really important uh for for yourself uh it kind of maps out uh, things for the day. Uh, then you want to look at the order flow events around it. Now, uh, yesterday uh, we had um, uh, a really choppy session, uh, especially in the afternoon. Poor Tom had the uh, 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 the joy of of trying to read the order flow when when in a very very choppy and difficult session yesterday. Uh, but then uh, just a beautiful breakout in the afternoon. Uh, late afternoon here uh, into the close and uh, we were looking at this forever this 4520 level okay we thought it would, would would trade up here in the morning it didn't it chopped all day long finally made it and then broke out and made it up to 4550 uh, up here uh, so uh, uh, anyway uh, beautiful breakout now you can even see the distinction in the order flow here okay look at the size of the dots down here let's just make them bigger for in general uh, but you can see the order flow in here. Look at the buyers coming in, breaking this level, okay, and then pulling it up out of that area. First target would be 45.20. They blew through it. Massive transactions at the close here, as you guys can see. This was uh, after the market, uh, and so uh, around uh, uh, I don't know, what was it? Uh, 4.15, 4.30 .4 actually. Uh, finally made it up into this area here. Okay, and we've been chopping around up there ever since. All right. So uh, anyway, uh, what's going on today? All right. So let's uh, let's take a look here. All right. So we open up. Well, let's look at yesterday as well. Here's the close. Right. And here is the uh, uh, look at this massive liquidity here. Big wall of liquidity uh, all the way down. Uh, let's see. Is this 4520? Just a little bit below our 4520. OK. So, um, yeah, 16 or so. Uh, this is 27 and this is 41 or 40 in here. Okay, so uh, we see some selling coming in. Uh, and uh, let's see if they can continue on down and hit this liquidity here. They're just shy of it. Uh, and let's take a look at the, uh, uh, the order flow in here. Right, a lot of selling here. Now this is the cash open though, we know that. Uh, and uh, uh, this is where everything changes here uh, at 930. Uh, you can see even the liquidity came, came in at these levels like like stocks. Uh, this is much the behavior is very much like stocks. Just massive walls of liquidity coming in here uh, at these price levels right at the cash open. Uh, so you'll see this behavior and like we can just go over to Tesla or any other stock and, and you'll see it immediately. Um, uh, how the 930 is like just a, a flick of the switch here uh, and liquidity okay even uh, Apple here if we zoom out yep yeah, same same idea uh, liquidity at right at 930 coming in um, yeah Kurt I had problems with rhythmic R Trader Pro this morning I'm not connected um, your gateway was to Seoul instead of Chicago really and that worked okay um, interesting thanks for the feedback Kurt um, so uh, we got Bitcoin up as well. We got some stocks. We do have the, the S&P and the NASDAQ here uh, from DX Feed, though. All right. Uh, can we take a look at Google? Sure. Uh, hold on. And then we'll wait for this to uh, get some uh, data into it. All right. Okay. So, uh, what's, so what's going on now in this S and P? Well, pretty choppy um, in terms of like uh, you can see the whole overnight session here. Uh, liquidity down here supporting it. That's good. Uh, and then you can see uh, moving on up into these areas, they pulled that liquidity here, but they at 9.30, or this isn't 9.30, this is uh, uh, 8 o'clock here, uh, just before 8, they, they filled that liquidity and we sold off uh, since. Okay, So uh, on the way down here, the cash open down to this 45.40, just shy of it. Uh, let's take a look at the volume and the order flow within this area here. All right, so 
first thing I'm going to do is I, I'm going to pose a question. Who's in control uh, in this market here? Okay, right now. That's right, Alec. Uh, it, it's sellers. Sellers taking control here. That's right. Perfect. Beautiful. Uh, I love it. Uh, now, but look at look at where the majority. So we got this is what we want to know. We this is where they dropped it. Okay, and we're still below that area. So sellers are, are in control. Uh, and there's quite a bit of selling. You can see the dots, you can see the bars, uh, and the sellers took control here. Uh, and um, uh, we see the drop down here, and the majority of the volume, though, traded down here. Okay, so this is what we want to be kind of careful about. Although sellers did take control here, and there's pretty high selling in here, uh, the uh, majority of it traded down here. Okay, and uh, a bit here as well, but uh, uh, into this high liquidity in here. Okay, CVD dropping like a rock, uh, and we know that this liquidity is getting filled in here as well. So um, probably some massive icebergs in there as well. I, I wish I could see them, uh, but uh, I will have to wait for Rhythmic on that. Uh, and then uh, we see the move out of this area here. Where, though? Look, look where. Okay, where that massive transaction took place and where that volume is, and this is where buyers are trying to take control. Okay, and the volume's not bad, but they're only able to reach back up to here. Okay, sellers coming right back in, and here they come. So let's see if they can break below this area here. We're looking for just a target to this 4550 area right now. Okay, there's some liquidity coming in here now, not, not a whole lot, but there's some right here. Okay, so looking for that to be tested first. That would be the first target on this. Uh, and um, boy, I should say um, area to test uh, in terms of target. We're not, this is not a trading room uh, uh, until JTrader gets in here. All right, so uh, uh, yeah, we're looking for that move down here. Uh, we're getting a slight pullback. Okay, we can even get a pullback to here, but sellers still remain in control from this area on down. So I'm still looking for sellers to hit down into 50 here. Okay. All right. So now your trade management, once you start to get down into this area, it's up to you. It's up to you on your time frame. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about trade management in here uh, and execution. Okay. Because uh, when you get down into some of these levels here, uh, if you're trading on a very small time frame, then consider taking your profit. Okay. Or taking up at least a partial and reducing your risk. Okay, because look what happens. You know, you get these moves right back here. Now, even with this move back, it's not bad volume. Okay, so maybe it just sets up and, and we get a trading zone in here right now. Okay, maybe uh, that's a scenario to go through. All right. So, uh, uh, but the 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 primary scenario is still sell side uh, on this move. Okay, it's short time frame sell side. Higher time frame here since the cash opens, also a sell side. All right, so that's the primary scenario. Uh, and we're looking for order flow to support that direction. And we're looking for this test into 45.50 here. Okay, so they can come up as far as this 57, maybe a little bit higher here. A lot of times they do. Uh, and then we see some exhaustion or these buyers on the hook and sellers come in and pound it. Okay, uh, even this move here, like, yeah, you know, it's getting a little little dicier. There's a little more volume coming in here, a little more, you know, green dots coming in, but still sellers are in control on this move here. Okay, so we're still remaining sell side. Okay, until we see something different. Good morning, J Trader. All right. So good morning, Bruce. Good, good morning. morning, everybody. How are you doing? Good, buddy. Good. Uh, very good morning. Uh, so coming from a flat day scratch day small red yesterday um so we're gonna cover some good stuff today okay well let, let's guys just keep keep an eye out for this here looking for that test of 4550 and let's turn it over to to joseph uh and uh, let him uh, him take it away here so i'll stop sharing and let me get in there and share Joseph's screen. Hold on. Okay. Bruce, I put 720 and uh, 15 uh, should be fine. Okay. Perfect. Uh, can you uh, 
Yeah. Give me a confirmation that you see that monitor. Yeah, hold on just a moment. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I'm still kind of all thumbs on this. Um, getting there. I'm getting better. Huh, okay. Yeah. All right. And I'm going to stream it as well. Okay, so you guys have it. Okay. Uh, so you guys can now join. It's actually um, uh, ooh, um, now let me share my screen. Okay. Okay. So now you can see that uh, we have stream one. We have J Trader, and then I'm also uh, streaming uh, uh, Joseph's uh, uh, desktop. So uh, uh, yeah, you're all good to go, Joseph. Okay. So good morning, traders. This morning we have uh, NQ fading. I need to make a little bit of uh, introduction. NQ is our guide. You can use also SPY and the Qs if you want. Uh, this morning, we were looking at this main level, which was the, it was the uh, daily day lines just above at uh, 15,500. And then we have also this uh, main catalyst area, which is the 15,000. Looking into our hourly chart, we can see that the price simply opened this morning over here. Sorry, opened this morning over here, did a pop and right away a fail, then bounce from this level, and now it's basically lateral. So I've been using the one, the five minute chart for intraday, and we can see that the price over here was always up trending, up trending, up trending. So basically, we had one, two, three days over here. And for now, it's starting to reject. So this morning, we've seen uh, a pretty good level to short. Uh, I will share after some, some charts so in order for you to understand executions. And over here, we had a pop into this level of resistance, and then right away started to fade. Over here, be, even before we had a pop, okay? So one in 930s, one over here at around 10 o'clock. So these are two main JLM rejections. And you can see the first made all this unwind. So while this was fading, we were riding or Netflix or Tesla or Nvidia short. And I personally took uh, Tesla short. Uh, just, go, just go check over here the stock um, room, for example. And we can see what Tesla did. So what you can see over here on Tesla is the main supply zone around 940, 950. This supply zone is uh, um, is based on a four hour and daily chart, right? So this morning, uh, we've seen this rejection right away in pre-market, but I mean, this means nothing if then the price on NQ and NES doesn't fail. So NQ started to fail, started to fail over here in pre-market, Tesla started to follow, Nvidia started to follow, Netflix started to follow, basically Netflix is the one that unwinded the most. And I was looking for a possible entry this morning, right? was looking for that, you know, perfect timing. So we had what I call always a bull trap. Those are the best shorts that you can ever find. First of all, you see the price that fails right at the gate. So I was waiting over here, simply avoiding trade this weakness. Uh, after the first five minutes, we had this pop, okay? Just to the 930s over here. And you can see on book map, we have just the reclaim of that VWAP, so this red line, right? And we went exactly to that 930. So once I saw this level, so this is a JLN rejection, started to fail, I short over here, just at 929, 929, I called the trade, uh, explain uh, why we're looking for this, but mainly we can see that they broke over here the level 930, first time, then dipped over here in the view up and tried to push it again. So when they try it a second time and they cannot really push it again and we start breaking this relative low, means this is a fake breakout. So I'm shorting this area right here when I start seeing these uh, selling dots, right? And I'm putting my stop above. And I know that my first target is down here. And we, uh, we wrote this all the way down here. 
Now, NQ, as we saw before, had another pop to the day lines. And you can see again, another pop into this 926, 928 area, right? So another day line rejection. And what happened over here on Bookmap? We went again to push into another uh, level of resistance and then started to fade. So technically, this is a pullback, right? Because this morning we're having a fader, then it's pulling back to the day lines, and then we have another fader. That pop over there is exactly this area. So just below this 930. We can look also the chart in the one minute uh, or the one minute. You can look at the stock, sorry, on the one minute. And you can see the zone over here with JLN, so this light blue area, right? We pop into this level, we push above, we get to the 929 and 14. Over here, you can see the pop right away starts to make lower high lower high lower low and then starts on white so right now we are in a very small intraday okay i'm not saying tesla is going to reverse going to go 500 no. but for today so what i'm basically uh basing my trade on uh we have this uh main fader over here okay so you have to look traders to uh, trade this stuff with the lowest risk possible with the lowest risk possible uh, for example, over here, uh, I missed the, the second trade. I took the first one, covered partial, re-added, covered everything in the money before my break-even was over here. And then I was, uh, I mainly missed it, okay? I mainly missed the second pop into the day lines, which is this level over here. Um, and, uh, and now I simply fading. We can have two main confirmation. So I always say that, uh, Use your charts. Use your charts means like uh, draw on your charts. Okay. If I see a 930 level over here on my book map, what I'm going to do? I'm going to put, I uh, draw generally on my uh, uh, brokers. Okay. I have three brokers. So for me, it's hard to draw on all of them. I will use one only to draw and have. Uh, so I put over here 930 because that 930 is my resistance book map. So when I go to uh, look the chart because I don't execute through book map, okay, um, I'm still waiting over here. Bruce is going to have the connection to uh, Cobra, Center Point, and others. But basically, that 930, right, is my low risk level. So I have over here my chart now, book map, and I can see that. Then I have over here the price action, and then I can start even drawing my trend lines for, I would say, uh, define what is the front side of the move, which is the first part over here, and then looking at the back side over here. Uh, everybody, is it clear this? Uh, Charu, I know you're over here, so you know how I trade. Uh, let me know if, miss, this is clear. Now, what I'm looking over here is not anymore really the chart, but I'm looking at the next main support levels. In this case, we have a main level at 910, Remember what we said, NQ, NQ, actually, sorry, I didn't say this over here. I was saying this before uh, on the room. NQ is a main support of 15,000. So that is the main technical target. All right. Uh, it's fading over here, making lower highs. I like this price action. I mean, when you have something like this, it's like Christmas. Oh, OLB traders, OLB, sorry. Let's look at OLB, please. Uh, why OLB? Because it was a stock that was interested this morning. I called the trade at 253. Uh, just to show how to short an uh, OLB, this is from of one of my uh, uh, former mentors. So you can see the kind of execution you have to have. Uh, short at top, cover the dip, reshort over here, recover. And uh, this is the, some of the execution on OLB, okay? So that you know how to short these gap and extensions exactly this pop over here 255 now let's see this price action but you see that i we have over here too many lines right i'm a little bit of uh i like simplicity so i'm gonna reduce this drastically to probably twenty thousand over here okay so by doing like this i only see few of those main levels few of those mid levels meantime over here nq is fading so now let's put up 
in case we have some uh, small cap traders over here. Let's put back up uh, OLB. So we have a pop. This stock is uh, flow rotating. This stock has traded 46 million volume while it has a float of 6.7 million, has a fluff news, uh, has a lot of bad golders. We can see a daily chart and warrants only above the uh, 450 level, right? So for now, uh, they have only 3 million of uh, uh, shelf and they're under baby shelf restriction. I know it's a lot of information altogether, but take it for granted because I did already my pre-market uh, investigation. So this area is a main area of supply on our chart because we can see how many tops we had, right? All this area over here. And then we have another one over here, this top over here. But right now we are very far from that area. So I'm not really considering those levels as far as I know that I have bag overs. Before we had two main levels of resistance, one was this one, one was this because we had the top and also here in pre-market, one was this over here, actually three main level of resistance. So I go check those levels with the book map over here and I can see right now formation 240, sorry, uh, 250, 242. So I see that this level of selling pressure is over here, okay? So book map in this case helped me. See so a main level resistance. Now, a uh, big seller over here uh, is placed at 240. Uh, Joseph, you're streaming in 1080, right? I'm streaming. Uh, let me just check one second, please. I'm streaming uh, uh, 1020, 720. Okay. Can, can you try 1080? I mean, uh, um, I think you can still do it at 15 per second uh frames per second or even five yes 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 Let's try it i think it would be clearer here okay you, you should see it uh you're able to see it buddy yes yes i i think that's clearer for everybody let us know um but uh, our from our testing we found that lower frame rate is actually clearer um okay so this is the lowest i can get great great thank you joseph sorry to interrupt you're welcome no problem so right now, traders, I'm looking again how the price will react at 340, uh, 242. Uh, we have uh, not high volume over here. Uh, so this could be a good area to short. Or this 248, 250, where you also have book map. Or the side over here, 260. Remember, our first trade is this, the A plus setup. Okay, so we shorted this area. And then we took this all the way down to the other uh, J lines, right? Now, this is a normal pop. You will see this often over and over and over in all the small caps. Some will push to the pre market high, some will simply uh, push over here, mid range, and then looking for a fade. Look the times and sales on the right. My times and sales is filtered. I suggested to put the minimum size 10,000 over here. So we'll see traders how they were possibly spoofing over here. A bit of 85,000 then the same person or institution we don't know eighty three thousand, and then again over here seventy one thousand. so they're trying to hold over here the price Two thirty seven. Uh, 
Chris what on the left side? This one, you mean? This indicator. This one that I'm pointing out. Uh, it's an indicator that uh, I give to who uh, gets a one on one with me or a mentoring. Basically, it tells me the pre market volume, the daily volume, the percentage of retracement, what setup I'm looking to trade, if I gap an extension, gap and gap down day two, gap and crap, and so on. And then over here, other, I uh, would say, um, other parameters. So they're stacking a little bit of resistance between 240 and 242. A little bit slow price action, right? This is not really interesting. For example, like our Tesla over here or NQ or Netflix that instead is simply unwinding all morning, right? So Netflix is another one that gave a perfect setup. So you want to trade Netflix? Show me those damn J lines. Where top tick over here, short uh, exactly that 451. Bookmap was simply crazy over here, the 451, because even here you can see the fake breakout. And then uh, they try to hold it over here, right? You can see there they try to put the 13,000, but they sold it. Okay, this was really uh, sold. We broke that previous relative low 449 boom all the way down. And now, if you look at this star pattern, it seems like we're forming a wedge. So, possible break and unwind. So, when I have this again, I'm looking what I have below. Okay. So, I'm going to start looking the main support levels. I see one basically at 435, but it's only 5,000 over here. So possible breakdown coming over here on Netflix traders. In order for me to take the trade, I need the price to go over here. Okay, makes sense, Charu. Okay, the volatility on. Uh, uh, big caps is pretty high these days, so we have a lot of range. Very good to trade these. Uh, start really to look into them, right? And there we are, the breakdown. Look over here, traders. Boom, breaking that uh, wedge. Uh, let's cancel over here some of the lines. So this is our wedge, right? Sorry, this uh, level over here. This level over here. Uh, let's focus on the breakdown. Start to look over here at the price section. Uh, filter this, in my opinion, at least 1,000 shares. You don't really care if they're shorting or if they're selling in this case. Uh, 100 shares, 200 shares, 1,000 shares. Filter that. Okay, you want to see only the block passing. More continuation. If it breaks 438, target 435. Three lower highs on this one. Uh, Qs are bouncing. So when you trade uh, Netflix, 
put always next to you and queue. Uh, why I like the futures? Because they anticipate the price action. Okay. Often you will see a little bit of like of a glitch between, for example, trading Netflix or the stock and trading the future. So future will anticipate the move. Tesla, Nvidia are bouncing following more NQ. Netflix has a little bit more, we say, weaker relative strength. So they're selling a little bit more over here on Netflix. But again, this is a perfect pattern. This was a killer, okay? So you wanna make really your paycheck every single day. Look to trade these setups over here. NQ is starting to fade, it's bringing down the market. Yes, as well, Q's weak. Uh, the majority of the tech stocks in this case are red. Look to trade these, add these pops, okay? Don't really look to trade the breakdown because often they will give you a fake uh, move or you'll basically short the dip. Instead, look to short those pops. Yeah, Joseph, this is a comment on that. Like um, uh, the way that uh, a, a few different things here, like, like bigger picture and the markets you've chosen to trade mm -hmm. uh, stocks uh, and you're filtering for these stocks. You're looking for things that are moving uh, and uh, you know they're moving because <laughs> you, you filter for the ones that are moving. Um, and then... Uh, you know, compared to futures, like you were talking about that, um, you know, a futures, futures, like a lot, I mean, it's an index of at least the stock indexes, uh, and, uh, they may or may not be moving. Uh, but, uh, because you have so many different stocks that you can look at, you're going to filter for the ones that are, that are moving. Uh, and that allows you, uh, then, like you said, this, this comment on paycheck, um, uh, you know, because trading is really not like that. We, you can show up to work and you can work as hard as you want and you can lose money. Um, but uh, you have a strategy that is based on the stocks that you're looking at that are moving. Uh, and, and yes, then it, you know, you can consistently make money every day uh, if you get that right uh, uh, combination there. Exactly. Or, or you can simply lose money every single day if you don't have a strategy <laughs> right that's that's the point trader so uh now i'm covering uh setups that it's really years that i'm trading these setups so i know how to manage them it takes a little bit of time to uh, to find confidence this is my way of uh, using bookmap together with the charts and uh, uh one of the i would say the main things that i see from beginners is that they often get scared from this support. You know, I'm reviewing a lot of trades um, in, in, even from, from, you know, people that write me on socials or whatever, in private. And uh, often they uh, they tell me, oh, I covered because I saw a big support near, or how you use the bookmap because I saw this big support, I got out and then the move went still for 20 points per share. And I always say, I mean, market is filled with supply and demand. So there will be levels, very important, that basically you can have a stall of the move. Uh, levels where maybe you can have a breakdown, in this case, if you're short and lead to a more follow through. Or a levels of demand, 
where we can have a uh, bounce. So how to define and see the difference is, you know, what takes time. Uh, for example, if I'm looking at the daily, weekly, uh, hourly level, okay, like we saw over here, this 460, and then I see a confirmation around this 460 area of a huge heat map. Uh, visually, you will see uh, a deeper color versus the others, right? Then that level can be a possible reversal. If I'm looking over here at Netflix, all right, why I had that level over there? Because you can go back and you can see that that level was a top, was a dip, a dip, a dip, a dip, a dip. Okay, so I know that at this level right, over here, traders, which is called supply yeah. zone, over here, that in I this missed. case, we can have okay. a possible reversal so, of the move. Then I need to time it, okay? Of course, I need to time it with uh, proper tools, okay? And a strategy in order to take the trade, all right? So it's basically, if you put things together, pretty easy. But you need to know what you're looking for. So over here, traders, we didn't get to that 435 yet. We got to the 436 bounce. Why I was saying 435? Uh, not because I see any kind of uh, daily level exactly 435. For me, the next level of interest is 425. But because every $5 into $5, we have a main uh, demand zone in this case, all right? It's just 5,000. I mean, if you consider each bar over here in the five minutes art, at an average of 98K or 100K, 5,000 is almost nothing, right? But still, I know that when we'll trigger that 435, other buyers will come. So these are limit orders already placed over there. Then you will have, you know, market orders joining and maybe other traders as well. A little bit of bounce, 438. In the meantime, I'm watching NVIDIA, Netflix, Tesla, Apple on other monitors, and the NQs. So we have a small bounce over here of uh, Tesla. A small bounce on NVIDIA. And now we have a almost $3 bounce as well as on Netflix. So let's go back and check. And we're going to check if we have some actual entry level, right? And Q is bouncing to the J lines. Tesla is bouncing over here. We're going to put also NVIDIA. Almost bouncing into our level. So you can see traders NQ is bouncing to the hour, to the one minute Zealands over here. Before we had the top into the one minute Zealands and then started to fade. I'm waiting in the price section into this main area over here, 922. Uh, as you can see, we have a top, a dip, a top. So I'm looking at the price section to get into this area. Also, we have heat map over here. You can see the heat map. And also we have the VWAP in the zone. I have a book map in the zone. I have a J-line in the zone. So I'm looking for that area. And it's all morning that is doing right that, uh, like this, okay? So the three main levels where we had the reversal on NQ are one, two, and now looking for this third one. I'm still looking at the price section. I still didn't grab anything.
So we're showing weakness over here. You can see that first rejection from J lines. I was waiting the price a little bit higher, 922, 923. So I'm not in. I didn't get filled over here. Why this level? Because before we had the tops and the dips into this level. Okay. And because we had the higher heat map. So I wanted to get as close as possible to a low risk entry area, which was this one. Okay. It's like over here. I'm not going to short into this area over here, right, Bruce? I'm going to short possibly near this main level. Why? Because we had the dip before, we had the top. So this is my main resistance. Plus, we have the book map. Same thing over here. If I miss, I don't chase. Exactly. This is, for example, another trader just to show you how to short with those J line rejections. Uh, the first over here, and then right in the fill. And then over here, a scratch, but then taking this one, uh, stopping out, and then reshorting and taking the backside of the move. Okay. So look always for those tops. The first one over here, fail, you trade short. The second one over here. Forming a higher low, and then a little bit more resistance that 921 over here. So let's wait also in Q. Price section over here, trade is a little bit slow, uh, almost 11 o'clock. The fader over here already happened this morning. Now, again, I'm looking for another possible re -answer. This time, what I'm doing, I'm lowering my size, okay? It was a good morning. Uh, yesterday, for example, we had a lot of chop. Uh, yesterday, I closed very small red, basically, uh, commissions and uh, got stopped two or three uh, times, a uh, few wins. So we didn't have any kind of range. Tesla, Apple, Netflix, they were all like lateral. And uh, uh, this morning that Netflix, Tesla, Apple gave a lot of range, okay? So they simply rejected and started to follow NQ. You can see NQ over here, what I'm looking at. I'm looking for this trend line break on NQ. And I'm looking then, to enter on Tesla on Netflix. And you can even do this on options, right? Uh, for example, in this case, we're trading intraday, day trading, so I would stay more with the weekly options, practically um, this week expiration, looking for the first OTM uh, in the money or, um, or the first, sorry, uh, round the dollar number, OTM or ITM, okay? So, or out of the money or uh, in the money. Uh, first break over here in NQ. I'm still not short.
let's see if we can have a pop over here on Tesla. If I have a small pop on Tesla, then I'm looking to take uh, some short on Tesla over here, a smaller size. Try to grab 917 on Tesla. I couldn't get a fill. I still have my, you heard the click that was 917 short and I ask and I missed this. So I was putting my fill when I saw this small bounce over here. You saw it. Put this uh, order over here. I was putting order 917 with my brokers and then faded over here already four points almost from there. Uh, why? Because I was looking at these inside. Ups, all right inside of this bar and i wanted to look to short the ask so i'm not almost every uh every time shorting the bid because if i short the bid i'm gonna give you really a a good tip this will save you a ton of cash trust me if you short the bid with the spread with the slippage if you have not a fast broker if you have not a fast connection if you are slow with me as me you will get filled on here You'll probably get feel like even once one buck over here spread, all right, away from where you wanted to short. If instead you wait for these small pops in a downtrend, you can short over here on the ass with very minimal risk. And you will have a tighter stop loss. You will have a better feel. Of course, you need a little bit of practice and, and uh, I would say um, experience to do this. But it will save you, one, a ton of cash, a ton of commissions because you will add liquidity. Now, you know, I don't want to make names, but for example, you can see over here what I use for charting on the left. If you try to do this short, okay, on the bid, you will get good slippage. All right, so Charu, what do you think about this? I'm interactive a little bit, uh, Bruce, with Charu because I know her. So uh, I think she, and she trades with uh, Bookmap, she trades with. Uh, uh, the big caps. Sure, no, no problem. I mean, uh, others get get your questions in for for Joseph. I mean, he's actively, uh, you know, uh, answering your questions. If if you guys want to reach out. So the point over here is uh, I don't chase. For example, uh, Char, do you take the short over here, or we take you know that the perfect point, or I simply are waiting waiting over here. Joseph, do you do you have a uh, issues like I mean on those pullbacks getting filled there? I mean uh, with a limit order, just because there's not a whole lot of volume that um, that trades there. Yes, as a matter of fact, my my short was uh, uh, exactly over here on my broker uh, on this small pop. Sorry, over here on this small pop, and it didn't get filled. And uh, yeah, sometimes short in the ask, you will miss the opportunity. Mm. But it will guarantee you that if the market right away uh, bounces and you're short, you don't get stabbed really uh, immediately. Because what I see from the majority of the members that I, of the traders, sorry, that, that I mentor, that I follow, if they want to short at 9.15, they're going to press short the bid with slippage, slow execution, they will get filled over here and then it dips and then bounces. You know what they do? They stop out. So professional traders, um, I speak often with another professional trader and a trader that trades really even three or 4,000 on Tesla at a time uh, shares and 90% uh, of his executions are short on the ask. Okay. Short on the ask. I see. Yep. Makes sense. Or buying on the bid, or buying on the bid, especially if you do day trading. Of course, Bruce, if you do like, you know, swing trading, who, give, who gives a damn, you know, let's talk clearly. But if you want to, you know, have better results, also a lot of brokers, if you add liquidity, they give you rebates. So per, uh, partial, uh, I would say, commissions back, you can, you can think like that, traders, right? And uh, that's the reason why adding liquidity is much better. In the meantime, Netflix, another leg down over here. 
So let's continue to make lower highs, lower lows. Netflix is the is the hottest of the three between uh, Netflix, Tesla, and Apple. And Q is slowly bouncing over here. OLB is simply dead, unless any kind of crazy volume. We won't see the 242. So no trade short for me down here. This, for example, traders, is the use of, uh, of short in a J line rejection. You can see a perfect short over here, right? And then looking for the fade. In this case, this is a small cap, uh, but the same thing happens on futures or on big caps or cryptocurrency. Breakdown on Tesla over here. So you can see the break of this micro support 913. Next target on Tesla, we have the 900. Okay, let's put the hourly chart. Let's review a few things over here. First of all, find with bookmap the main level of support, 910 and then 900. 900, we have 35,000 over there. Practically, when it would be around 903, this will be practically, I believe, maybe 40, 50K or more. Uh, these zones, I use them in combination with bookmap. So these zones over here, okay. Uh, it's not an indicator. This is just like uh, uh, levels of supply and demand that you can recognize by yourself. Uh, this is the level, and these levels I traced like uh, weeks or months ago, so not this morning. Uh, so this is a turning point, a turning point over here, a turning point over here, a turning point over here this morning. Now, uh, this is the support that I'm watching this morning, this is 905, 900. If we break this, this we have I-880s. If we break this, we're going to have this small little consolidation, A60. If we break this, we're going to have 800. So we are going to look at each of these levels, how much support and uh, heat map we'll have over here. And now look this level, previous support, right? 905. So yesterday is, uh, is, my, is my choppy day, right? Choppy day. Look at the 15 minute chart. Actually, I think you can see better on the five minute chart, yes. So on a five minute chart, we'll do like this one second. We can see the trend over here, right? So started to trend very big. And then yesterday, simply choppy. And we reversed after the first hour, right? And then it's basically been lateral. This morning, we are creating over here a big uh, fail. And finally, we have the J line shifting. So we can really break this 905, lead to this support. We break this, we're going to lead to this main support. Okay. Take me for granted that this is reversing right now. I can make an example. You can see when the all J lines go above this, right? This is your long. You can see over here when all the J lines go below the yellow, right? Over here. This is your short. So very simplistic. Okay. So in a very simple way, I'm explaining just like the turning points. Leg down over here, leg down. So a small wash. And look over here, this beautiful bar in the one minute, 914 all the way down to 907 and then bounce back up. Simply a nice wash over here, right? So some big sellers. We had 4,000, another 5,000. So somebody over here wanted to liquidate uh, 13,000. Now we don't know if it's a short, or if this is basically 
uh, sellers. So longs that are selling over here, okay? We don't know this. So target all the way down, traders, to the 905, okay? As I said, I'm not short. I shared this morning my trade. I shorted only this over here until here, and then that's it. Missed this because I was not paying attention. And this over here, I couldn't get a fill into this area over here, 917. Anybody took it? A little bit of bounce. Let's look at AMD yesterday earnings. So a uh, few things over here to understand. Question for you, Taro, where we should sh uh, short AMD? Turning point, turning point. You see traders over here, that's your turning point to short. Okay, we have a structure of J lines and we have a structure of heat map showing me that it's a pretty big level of resistance. And then right away, you can see the sellers jumping in. Yeah, that, that's, exactly. that's beautiful, Joseph. Uh, just this, that again, so simple combination of your zones and levels you're looking at and order flow. Exactly, 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 Bruce. <clears throat> now, what we see is that somebody over here wants to hold the support, right? You always have to think something. When a stock is going down, don't think, oh, everybody's shorting. Think in another way. Think, wow, we have a lot of dip buyers because everybody's thinking that the price now of the stock is at discount, you know? Like if you are, I don't know, at... Uh, at the Walmart and you and you find ketchup for cheap. Basically, it's not that. Way that the trend ended, started to again accumulate and then take the bounce. All right. Otherwise, you will just take a falling knife. Over here this morning, I've seen so many traders out there, um, even on socials, saying buy 128, buy 125, buy 122, whatever. The point is, it's still downtrend over here. Yesterday, the earnings, good after night, after uh, after hours over here pushing. This morning, it's like a sell the new scenario, right? It's behaving the same way. Possibly, this will come all the way down. I mean, look at this huge amount of sellers. So, who was long over here yesterday is now selling. Below the open level, below the VWAP, fading over here ton of sellers at 130. We have a little bit of sellers up here, so. That's amazing. That's a pretty amazing chart. Uh, so it must be, that's earnings end, end of day right there, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. Push uh, pretty pretty big last night, uh, dipped over here, cut pattern, then push. I'm not really uh, trading lately, traders' uh, earnings, as I was saying this morning. For me, it's a little bit too late in the night. So I'm a little bit waiting this. Yeah, also Google, thank you, uh, Charu. Let's look at Google. So I'm gonna put over here Google. All right, so earnings, exactly the same uh, scenario. We can put the, uh, a one-minute chart. I didn't follow Google this morning, right? So I'm very honest over here saying didn't follow this. Didn't know how it performed. 
in your continuum. No way I'm blocked over here. Okay, let's say so empty. Uh, let's see, Google. Yeah, I have a problem trader that probably over here I have to restart then uh, book them up so I cannot uh, check on Google. I can only show with a chart. So basically, the same pop of uh, AMD. Daylines rejection over here, and then broke this main support 29.60 and unwinded. Okay. Uh, let's see on AMD. Nvidia getting to the lows of the day. Uh, Tesla 907 right now. Uh, what a big move, really. What a big move. Apple a little bit lateral. Netflix. Finally, with the 434. Netflix just simply melted down. So this is what we were saying before. Each time you see a big support doesn't mean necessary to cover. Okay. Uh, the main target that you should be waiting over here is this 425. And this 425 right here. Okay. If you're short on Netflix. We have a little bit of support in this area, but the main demand zone is this, okay? This over here, 425, 425. Let's look again, OLB, so very lateral, mm, not a lot of range. Tesla unwinding a little bit more. Yeah, target 905 reach, so let's see how it behaves. So Alan asking, why wouldn't Google be shooting uh, higher today? Was up almost $300 after earnings came out. So often, buddy, um, on earnings, we have traders. They're selling to take profit, okay? Imagine that, I don't know, you're in a position and tomorrow you have like 20% more. Often, the big players, they're taking profit and uh, they find like a very good way where to capitalize so it's uh called uh in in trading sell the new scenario that can be an upgrade that can be uh an earnings that can be other things not really if you announce the split but it's not really a bullish psychological event Nine zero five Tesla, almost there. And there we are, nine zero five. Let's see how it reacts. So we had traders the previous low at nine zero five, main support at nine. So we could have possibly a bounce over here. Let's check NQ. So NQ also did main support fifteen thousand over here. This is the main catalyst level. Oh, yes. If you look, for example, a lot of um, a reverse split, especially mid caps and small caps, they tend all to fade on the after day one. They're simply sell the new scenario. So Tesla, it's really on itself. Yep. 
90%, for example, small caps on a reverse split, they fail the same day and they go really down much. No, it doesn't really mean that you have necessarily to buy after the earnings. You have to look at that data, the strategy and how the market is um, dipping and pushing uh, like Roku did a lot of times or if it instead opens and pop and fill. Uh, after profit taking, uh, if you have the strategy, if we have a good support, then yes. But it's not, you know, like I'm buying after the dip after earnings uh, beat. No, I'm more a technical trader. And uh, there are not really stats for that in the sense I tracked it, but uh, it's not like a high win rate buying after earning, uh, uh, we say, win on a dip. Netflix going even lower, traders. And uh, over here, breaking this level, 905 over here, we had dip wash 900. Mark is really falling, Bruce. Prepare your parachute. If we break, if we break, look over here. If we confirm the breakdown, sorry, on NQ, Bruce, let's wait. This is my, what happened right now? Thinks my memory is freezing over here. Bookmap is fine though, right? Yes, I will stay with bookmap. Okay, start to go again. Let's look at bookmap 900. Flush. So below the support over here. This morning traders, Nvidia faded for about uh, 12 points. Uh, Netflix faded for about 30. Okay, I'm saying from the open. Tesla, okay, Tesla faded for about 40 points. So not not a bad day, right? Not a bad not a bad fail, not a bad red day. Uh, Joseph, uh, I, I'd like to show you the uh, sweeps and uh, absorption indicator uh, indicators okay. as well. Um, I don't know if I I don't think you have them loaded right now, but ne I'll, I'll offline and then maybe next week we can show them. But I think you might like it because of your when you're looking for those stuffs. Um, it mm -hmm. might be a little clearer. Okay. The, yeah. You can send me the, like during the week, and then we can try. Yeah. On uh, on the next uh, session. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Wow, it's really melting down, traders. Don't try to buy dips over here. Don't try to buy dips. No, my toss is not working. Nothing. You and your traders crashed it. <laughs> no, personally, I I took only the, the first Tesla and really missed this all entire move over here. This was really sweet. Yeah, beauty. Netflix over here. Netflix, I'm lining also very good today. MD continues to fade. And Google, Google, I know, is not loading over here for now. Okay, traders, last 10 minutes. So uh, market right now are pretty volatile. I don't know, buddy, if it's for the, for the, I believe it's mainly for the earnings. And then you also have to consider that the old sector is moving. So we have Tesla fading, Netflix fading, AMD fading. What really today was holding more was Apple. I really thought it would fade. So I was wrong. Uh, and I always say when I'm wrong. 
Uh, I thought Apple this morning was, because Apple was doing like this. It was at a high of the pre-market. It broke over here. And then I said, if it starts to consolidate over here on the pre-market high, I'm going to look for a long. Instead, it did this pop right away, fail, and then rains. And, but basically, uh, Apple was the strongest with the highest relative strength for today. Okay, the highest relative strength. Uh, Chow is saying, uh, Jay, volume is going up on Tesla the last few minutes. Is that volume divergence? Uh, volume, uh, where do you see it, um, uh, Charu, on bookmap below? Go, go, or Yeah, go to there and then uh, volume bars. And then check it, yeah. Okay. And then on the left-hand side, uh, where the number is, yeah, uh, left-click, hold, and drag it up. There you go. As high as, high as you want, whatever suits you. Okay, so this is a question that I make to you, Charu. If the price is going up, what does it mean when we have this? It means that they're selling more, right? So they're like, on this breakdown, look how much selling pressure came. Remember that often when you have this V pattern, you will see the highest peak of the volume over here. This is... On a one minute, could be on a three minute, could be on a five minutes. So it's not that you see the one minute and you will spot it. You have to look at multiple time frames. Okay, I, I tell you that for take it for granted because it's like that. <clears throat> yeah, Jamie, that could bring down the market. It could push up the the the, the crude oil. Yeah, one thing is increase of volume one thing is really the volume exhaustion so don't really now bruce maybe will say his opinion but in my opinion don't really look at those volume bars too much they can really uh you can spot the volume divergence you can look for uh imbalance you can look for exhaustion you can look for many things for breakouts I prefer really to look at the order flow, so really to look at my levels and how it basically behaves at those levels. I find it, at least for me, a little bit more, I would say, reliable. This is a V pattern. Okay? This is an exhaustion of the move. One, two, three. This is like a you know higher low over here breakout. Let's see again Netflix. We did the same thing. No, Netflix is just like slowly bouncing over here. AMD slowly bouncing. The only one that has bounced a little bit more is Tesla. And we have a main level of resistance at 910 over here. Okay, Twitter, so almost 11.30. Any other question? No, I think, I think you've... Uh answered everything in here a few questions coming in right now it looks like a uh, good question alec uh what do you look for reversals of trend uh, all right it depends first of all from the strategies that i use uh so it depends sorry for uh, from the time frame i use if i want to swing if i want to day trade or if I want to even a scalp. Uh, if I take, a, I would say, a common theme, I would say, one, main supply, supply or um, demand zone, together with chart pattern, together with order flow. Basically, these three things, okay? You can look for Camarilla points, you can look for pivot points, you can look for Woody's, you can look for Fibonacci. 
Uh, you can look for fractals. You can look for RSI. You can look for everything out there. Uh, basically, I, I believe that I that I uh, back tested like two thousand indicators, maybe even something more, in the years, and uh, they're all good, and they're all not good. Uh, so what I found really uh, simple and uh, profitable are the levels and the order flow. This is the, my main point. You know, then you can come up with something else that works for you. That's good, buddy. But that's my my process. For example, if I'm looking at a swing trade and I have hourly chart and the price is going up over there and over here I have the book maps, a big high resistance. I have over here also hourly J lines, a lower high, then that's a possible reversal pattern. Okay, Bruce, uh, let's uh, wrap it up over here for today. I think we cover a lot. I, I almost have no voice left. <laughs> yeah. I will leave Tara over here talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much, Joseph. Uh, great stuff in here. Nice moves. Um, and uh, always just the, the clarity and simplicity of your... Um, you're trading uh, and uh, exactly what you're looking for. You know exactly what it should look like and then your trade management around it. It's a um, really, really solid, uh, solid plan. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, remember, uh, if you need help, uh, just write to me or to Bruce. He's available 24-7. <laughs> no, so I really don't mind. And uh, see you next time. Thank you very much, traders. And always use your stop loss. Thank you. Thanks, Joseph. Bye-bye.